The Gregorian calendar, if you've studied history, you know that the Gregorian calendar did not go down very easily with indigenous people. The Gregorian calendar went out with the Spanish and with the Catholic bishops, and they conquered lands and then told people what day it was. Most civilizations already had their own calendar thing. And then these guys come along and say, ah, ah, no. This is the day. It didn't go down very easy. They had to kill millions and millions of people to get them to follow this Gregorian calendar. And what this Gregorian calendar was all about was the physical measurement of our orbit. And it turns out that this is a very, very insidious tool. You probably never thought that a calendar could be so evil. But what this calendar has done is it has pinned our civilization's consciousness to physical evidence only. The absolute dead center of our civilization is focused on only physical evidence. The measurement of physical objects moving through space. That's why it's not year of our Lord anymore. Because there has been a steady erosion of our consciousness of things other than physical. Where do the calendar months get their names? The answer is ancient Rome. But the specifics are a bit complicated. To lay it all out, we need to start with March. Because that was the first month of the calendar in ancient Rome. In Latin, it was called Martius, and it was named for Mars, the god of war. And agriculture. So the motivation may have had something to do with the start of farming season. The second month of the calendar was Aprilis. That name might be related to the Latin word for to open, opening buds and all that, or maybe Aphrodite, but we don't really know. Maius, the third month, was named for Maya, an earth goddess associated with fertility, who had a reputation as a good mother. She was Mercury's mom. The fourth month was named for the goddess Juno, a goddess of marriage and childbirth. It's always been a good month for weddings. After that came Quintilis. Yes, stick with me here. The fifth month was just called Quintilis from Quintus, the word for fifth. Then Sextilis from Sextus or sixth. Then the seventh month or September from Septum or seven. Now you get the idea for the rest. October, the eighth month. November, the ninth month. And finally, the tenth month from Decem, December. After that, just a whole bunch of unaffiliated winter days, just waiting it out till we get back to March, which was determined by the spring equinox. Eventually, two more months were added to the calendar for this period. Januarius, for the two-faced god Janus, and Februarius, for Februa, the name of a purification festival held during that time as preparation for spring. The Roman calendar was an inconsistent mess, with extra days having to be stuck in here and there, and sometimes even whole extra months. It's hard to deal with the cycles of the moon and the sun in the same system. But in 46 BC, Julius Caesar introduced a new system, with a pretty consistent year. 365 days, with an extra day added to February every four years. This is when Quintilis, the fifth month, was renamed Julius, July, the month of Caesar's birthday. Augustus, the emperor of Rome who came after Caesar, thought this month-naming gig was a fine idea, and so Sextilis became Augustus, August, for him. The fashion for month-naming ended there, so from September on we were left with the old numbered system. But because the beginning of the year was moved from March to January, the numbers didn't fit anymore. The seventh month became the ninth month, and the tenth a twelfth. Everyone was used to the names, though, and figuring out this whole day-counting thing was hard enough, so the names stayed. <laughs>